so hello and welcome to today's lesson <clears throat> so this happens to be the 11th lesson in our study of topology one so in this video we'll be talking about continuity so continuity in topological spaces we know what continuous and functions are so when it comes to topological spaces when we define a function right how would we be able to know whether that function is continuous or not so that's what we'll be discussing in this video so um this video is going to be a bit lengthy but um it contains everything you need to know as far as continuity is concerned um in topological spaces trust me if you watch to the end you're going to have a very deep understanding of the concept so please let's start but before that please don't forget to like the video and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't so that you'll be notified of new videos so let's take definition a definition here so suppose we have two topological spaces let's say x and y so a function f which is defined such that x maps onto y is continuous if f inverse of v is open in x for every open set v in y okay so here since this is small let's make this small v instead okay so that's the definition okay so we call this the open set definition of continuity and if you could understand the definition then um it has been summarized here so what it means is that f is continuous if the pre-image of every open set in y is open in x okay so don't worry as we move ahead and solve more questions the understanding will come okay so let's take an example so we have <clears throat> two topological species here x and y just like the definition said so x is what we can see here and y is what we can see here so these have topologies defined on them as shown below so this is a topology defined on x and this is a topology defined on y and we can see that we have our x and we have our y so this is our x and our y and these are the various functions so in this case we have three functions and they are such that x maps onto y i hope you see that so from the definition so the functions are defined by what we see here now the question is out of these three functions that we have which of them is continuous and which of them is not okay so that is what we are coming to do and the definition is going to help us a lot okay so now we have three different functions and we want to find out which of them are continuous and which of them is not or are not so you could see that we have x here and we have y here and this is the topology defined on x this is the topology defined on y but the question is do we really understand what is here and do we really understand what is here as well so to simplify things let's write this in a simple way we know right writing it in maybe tie equals something i think that one is very simple to comprehend than it's been in this form that we are going to do okay so you know that um this is our x and actually when we interpret the diagram above this is the topology defined on x so i'm going to explain to you the reason why it is so so you know for every topology automatically um the full set x and the empty set are always members of that topology right so now let's get the rest so you could see that this this big line here right so stands for the x because it contains all the points a b c d when it comes here this this thing here 
stands for ABC. So that is ABC. Then when it comes here, what you can see here stands for AB. So let's say it's AB. Then what we see here stands for the set CD. Then what we see here is just C. Okay. Then we also have the empty set. So this happens to be the topology defined on X. So let's call it tau then subscript X to show that it is the topology defined on X. So that is what we have here. Right, I hope you can see that. Then now we know y is one, two, three. So how do we also get the topology defined on y? So it is this. So let's see the reason why it is so. So when we come here, we could see that this alone, okay, the whole of this contains all the three points. So that stands for our x. Then this here contains one and two. So it stands for the set one, two. Then this here stands for one. The set just one. This here also represents the set two. And we have our empty set. Sorry, here the full set is y, not x. So this is also the topology defined on y. So now we've done about 50% of the work. The rest is very simple. So I hope you get how we got the topology. We're able to interpret it from the diagram. Very important. So to check that a function is continuous, we have to verify that the pre-image of each open set in Y is open in X. Right? So let's just def let's just sorry, let's just take the function f. So from the question we had f of a equals 1, f of b equals 1, f of c equals 2, f of d equals 3. So you could say the function f is such that x maps on towards y. So what we can see here, the a, the b, the c, and the d are from x. And what we can see here, the 1, the 2 are from y. So I hope you can see that. So... We said for our function f to be continuous, and the pre-image of each open set in y is open in x. So you could see that we have 1 and 2 here, right? So we have 1, and we have 2 here. When you check our topology defined on y, you will see that both the sets 1 and the set 2 are open in y, because it can be found in that um, our topology, right? So they are all open. So since they are all open, now we have to check if they are pre-image. It's also going to be open in what x. If that condition is satisfied, then it means that our function f is continuous. So now how do we get a pre-image of the open sets in y? So when we take 1, the pre-image of the set 1 will be no, you can see f of a equals 1, f of b equals 1. So that means the pre-image of the set 1 is going to be a and b. So that way we can see here, the set a and b. Then when we take 2, it's going to be c and d. c and d. So we are going to have this set c and d here. So now we have to check and see if the set a, b, and the set c, d are open. So... If for them to be open in X, it means they have to be found in the topology tau X, tau X, and they are all found in that topology. Okay, so let's come here. You can see we have AB here, we have CD here. So that means they are open in X. So in conclusion, therefore, F is continuous because the pre-image of each open set in Y is open in X. I hope you get it. It's very simple. So let's stop the rest of the two. If you understand, we will become clearer. Okay. So now let us take the function j. So this was what we were giving to in the question. So there's it. You can see the question give us these things, right? 
So now you can see that we have two, we have two, we have one, we have three here. And we know that the set one is open in Y. The set two is open in Y. But the set three is not open in Y because it's not found in the topology defined on Y. So you can see when it when we come here, we don't have any set three in that topology. So that means three is not open. It's not an open set in Y. So now since one and two, those sets are open in Y, we have to check that they are pre-image. Is each open in X? If that's the case, then it is continuous. So let's go on. So you can see we have two here. So we want to check the pre-image of two, you are going to get E and B. Since G of A is two and G of B is two, that means the pre-image of two will be the A here and the B here. So this is what we can see here. Then the pre-image of one will be C. And since the ray is not open in Y, we can decide not to check the pre-image, but for the sake of some explanation, let's check the pre-image of the ray. So you can see it is D. So now A, B, and C are all the open in X because they can be found in that topology. I hope you know what open says. I will discuss that. So since so the function g is also continuous since the pre-image of each open set in y is open in x. So you could see that here, when we find a pre-image of 3, we will get d. And d is not open in x. Let's see. So you can see when you take this, our topology defined on x, we don't have any sets like the set d here, right? So they say d is not open in x. But since the three, they said three wasn't also open in Y, we don't care, okay? So this was just there for mm, to explain something to you. So the function J is also continuous, okay? Now let's just take H. So this was what we were giving to you in the question. So we have to find a pre-image of each open set in Y. And check and see if they'll be open in what x. So we know that this is open in y. This is open in y as well, but this is not. All right. So that means we have to find a pre-image of just one and two, and check to see if what we get will also be open in x. So. Since each of A is equal to 1, that means the pre-image of 1 will be A. Then, since each of B is equal to 2 and each of C is equal to 2, the pre-image of 2 will be BC. And since the ray is not open in Y, doing this is not even important because the ray is not open in Y. So we are interested in the open set in Y, then we try to see if their pre-image will be open in X. So you could see that we have the set A here. It is open in X because it can be found in the topology defined on X. But when you take this BC, this BC here, it is not contained in the topology defined on X, right? Meaning it is not open in X. You can see when you come to um, our topology defined on X here, you can see um, when you come here, we have nothing like BC, meaning BC is not open in X. So in conclusion, H is not continuous because the set 2 is open in Y, but its pre-image, BC, is not open in X. Okay, so that's how you're able to find continuous functions 
as far as topological spaces are concerned. So I hope you got everything. If you didn't get anything, please you can leave a question, okay, in the comment section. And you can also um check in the description area to get a link to the previous video on the Levenstein distance. So thank you very much for watching the video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. So the next video is going to be on subspace topology. Okay. Thank you.